You are watching a nozzle probe in action. And guess what? No BL touch, no inductive sensor, just nozzle probing the bed itself. Usually a dedicated probe does the hard work, touching the bed or sensing it from a distance so the printer knows exactly where Z0 is. But in my system, the nozzle itself touches the bed and that contact is detected by a load cell. I used to have a BL touch in the tool head and I ended up breaking the pin so many times by accident I wanted something better. And what could be better than having the nozzle probe the bed itself? At first, I tried a simple switch in the tool head with the nozzle on a sliding mechanism that pressed the switch when it touches the bed. It worked at first, but at high speeds, the sliding mechanism introduced small shifts causing inconsistent layers. Before settling on the dual load cell design, I tried sticking a single load cell sensor directly to the tool head. It seemed promising, but the readings were unpredictable. After seeing the issues with the load cell sensor, I redesigned the tool head to accommodate two load cells. This setup keeps the nozzle rigid, balanced and stable. And since there are no moving parts, it stays rock solid during printing. The system has two main parts, the load cells and an RP2040 microcontroller. Clipper sees it as a normal probe. All you have to do is define the probe in your printer's config file. The system sends a simple pulse to Clipper whenever the nozzle touches the bed. And thanks to Clipper's activate and deactivate probe options, it's easy to enable the probe only when you need it. All the probing logic runs on the RP2040 Zero. It just sends that pulse to the printer. Now let me show you how I built it, the parts I used and how it all comes together. First, two load cells. Next, one HX711 amplifier and of course an RP2040 Zero. Since the printer board uses 5 volt logic and the RP2040 is 3.3 volt, We'll add a bi-directional logic level converter to ensure the trigger signal is safe and reliable. Now let's put everything together and see how the wiring flows. And don't worry, you will find every file you need on my GitHub. Check the description for the link. First, let's connect the load cell to the amplifier. Connect the red wire to E positive pad, the black wire to E minus, and then green wire to A minus, and finally the white wire to A positive. And that's how it should look once the wires are soldered in place. By default, the HX711 runs at 10 samples per second, which is too slow for probing. So we switch it to 80 samples per second. It's simple, just move this resistor from here to here. Next, let's connect the HX711 to RP2040 Zero. We'll use the GPIO10 for DT pin and GPIO11 for SCK pin. Make sure the VCC and ground are also connected correctly. VCC to 5 volt and ground to ground. I'm using GPIO10 and 11 because they line up nicely with the HX711 pins so I can connect them easily with two header pins. Plus, I've already defined these pins in the code for data and clock. Next, we'll add a small logic level converter. This will connect the RP2040 to printer safely. Let's wire it up. I'm using the Z-Pro plug on the printer board, which already have five volt and two IO pins exposed. The HV side of the converter connects to that 5 volt, while the LV side connects to the RP20's 3.3 volt. Both share a common ground, and the RP2040 is finally powered by the same 5 volt from the printer. For this probe to work, we need two signal lines, a trigger pin on GPIO7 and an output pin on GPIO6. The trigger pin allows the printer to tell the RP2040 when to activate and deactivate the probe. And the output pin goes back to the printer's Z and stop input to report when the nozzle makes contact. I've moved the Z and stop signal to pin PA1, which is simple to set up in the printer's config. Now that the wiring is sorted, let me show you the real thing. Here's the RP2040, the HX711 module and the load cell all connected and ready to go. Connecting it to the printer is simple. It plugs directly into the Z-Probe port on the main board. Now that the hardware is ready, 
Let's load the code onto the RP2040. I'm assuming you already have CircuitPython installed. If not, I'll link the quick guide in the description. To upload the code, I'm using Thorny, a simple Python IDE. Just open Thorny, select the correct board and port for the RP2040. Open the code file. and save it as main.py directly to the RP2040. That's it. The board will automatically run the code. With the RP2040 ready, let's configure Clipper. For Clipper, we need four things. First, the probe section. Second, an output pin to activate and deactivate the probe. Third, the homing override setup and fourth, force move enabled. Finally, we'll add a macro to clean the nozzle before probing for accurate results. For the probe section, we are going to define a custom probe, which is super easy thanks to Clipper's documentation. To make this probe work, there are a few key settings. First, the probe pin, mine is PA1. For the probe offset, we'll set X and Y to zero, since we are using the nozzle itself. Next, set the sample tolerance retries to some big number, 15, and finally, Define the activate and deactivate G-code for the probe. Next, we need to set up the output pin and we'll name it Z Wake Up. We need to set three important settings. First, the pin itself, in my case, PC14. Second, disable PWM. And third, set the initial state of the pin to off. Now, let's set up the homing override. Here, I've configured the printer to home Z using sensorless homing first. Then probe the bed and finally set Z0 with set kinematic position. This way we get the best of both worlds, robust homing, a precise leveling. Next, let's set a force move. This one's simple, just add these lines to your config. Finally, let's add a macro to clean the nozzle. I've called it clean nozzle probe. Here's how it works. First. It probes two points on the bed, the first point and then the second point. While still touching the bed at the second point, the nozzle starts heating up. Once it reaches 220C, it moves back to the first point and wipes the nozzle clean. Next, it retracts 5mm of filament and set the part cooling fan to 100%. While staying in contact with the bed, it begins cooling down. When it reaches 140C, the nozzle lifts off the bed, the fan turns off, a message appears, nozzle ready. Now all we need to do is call this macro from the start print G code, so the nozzle is always clean before the first layer. Setup complete. Now the real moment. Let's put this probe to the test. We are doing a single layer print, 210 by 210 millimeters at 0.2 millimeter height. First, it runs the homing sequence. Then the nozzle cleaning macro executes, followed by the bed mesh leveling. And finally, it starts printing across the entire bed. Let's see how it performs. As you can see, the first layer lays down cleanly and the print progresses smoothly across the bed. The probe is keeping everything accurate just as planned. And that's the setup in action. What do you think? Would you try this on your own printer? If you enjoyed this video, give it a like and subscribe so you don't miss the next project.